Hello and uh, welcome to Friday's Granada Reports. We are live for the latest across the Northwest. Hello there. On the programme this evening. For the love of Olivia, her mother tells off a permission to force convicted criminals to appear in courts to be sentenced after killer Thomas Cashman was allowed to hide from justice in his cell. I think wholeheartedly I wanted to see if there was any remorse there. I wanted to see if he was taking any accountability for it. And I never got that chance. Pollution protests, the message to United Utilities to clean up their act and the North West's waterways. Putting themselves in contention were at the Open Championship at Hoylake following the fortunes of our local hopefuls. Rehearsing in the rain, we're in Lancaster where drama and downpours take centre stage as the outdoor theatre season gets underway. And fantastic reflections in the puddles at Sefton Park, but there's a fair few millimetres of rainfall expected during the course of the weekend. All the detail, your forecast coming up a little later on. So do please stay with us. But first tonight, it's called Face the Family, the campaign to force those convicted in court to face the families affected by their crimes. And it's become the personal mission of Cheryl Corbell, whose nine-year-old daughter Olivia was shot and killed in her own home almost a year ago. The man who fired the gun that terrible night was drug dealer Thomas Cashman. Having denied being the killer, as we know, he was found guilty. But he refused to leave his cell to appear in court as the judge sentenced him to life in prison with a minimum of 42 years. Olivia's family didn't even know he was allowed to do that. Since then, they've been putting pressure on the government to change the law to make sure no more criminals can dodge the moment justice is served on them. Olivia's mum, Cheryl, and her aunties, Kim and Antonia, were with us earlier. We asked them about the moments they realised Cashman was refusing to face justice being served on him. Um, it was on the day. Um, we didn't know he had an option. Can you remember what went through your mind? Why he wasn't coming up. Um, why go through the whole trial of being there every day and come to a sentencing and, he, and he's not there. I want, wanted to ad address him. I wanted the, the pain that we went through and the pain was still going through. I wanted that to come from me. It was hard. And I wanted him to know. The pain he's put us through. Were you surprised to understand that there's nothing that the judge could have done about it? Yeah, yeah. I thought that if the, the judge said, no, he's, he's got to come up, he, he would have to come up. But we were told there was, there was nothing that, that she could do. So doing this campaign and getting as many signatures as we can to change the law, to give them that extra power to get them into the dock. What difference would that have made to you and the family if you had appeared on that on that day? I think wholeheartedly I wanted to see if there was any remorse there. I wanted to see if he was taking any accountability for it. And I never got that chance. I felt like he had the power right, right the way through that trial. Um, myself and my family, we sat through the whole court and never said a word. Because at the same time, we weren't lowering ourselves to their standards. Um, to, as I say, for the, the sentence, and that was our time. Mm. That was our chance of having a voice. And he wasn't there to hear it. So you're doing this for other families now? Yeah. 
to make sure that they don't go through what you and your family have been through? Yeah, it's a... Um, some people have said there's, there's no point in doing an impact statement. Me personally, I think it's worth it. Um, because you'd have a load of feelings all inside and to get them feelings out onto paper it does take a bit of pressure off. Kim and Antonia, your family, what's it been like seeing what Cheryl has been through? What do you want to see happen? To know what he's done to her and Ryan and Chloe, not just us. It's more impactful, obviously. Cheryl's baby. She's a bit the family of the, the baby of the family, but she's Cheryl's baby. And she, it's left a massive, massive hole. Us being there for her, watching what she's going through and the kids are going through. It destroys us too. It's knowing that you can't do anything to take that pain away, apart from just be there. And it's doing the face the family is giving us a purpose. What would your message be to our viewers who, who are watching Please this chat today? sign the petition. We need 100,000 signatures to get it into Parliament. So sign the petition, share it, family, friends, social media, just get it out there. And Cheryl, if you could speak to lawmakers, those who are passing the laws in this country, what would your message to them be? To listen to the families, listen to the people that have already signed the petition, who won the change just as much as we do and words are just words we need action Cheryl Kim Antonia thank you very much for your time Thanks thank for you having us thank you magnificent women many of us yeah. wouldn't be able to carry on wouldn't be able to get out of bed in the morning and yet they carry on and try to change things. Yeah, such a courageous family. Um, there's more information about the Face the Family campaign and the petition on our website. Um, the usual address, um, itv.com slash Granada. Uh, and just so you know, that petition closes on the 14th of October. We move on to the other news of the day. And a 22-year-old man has been found guilty of murdering the cousin of world heavyweight boxing champion Tyson Fury. 31-year-old Rico Burton was stabbed in the neck outside a bar in Altrincham last August. Liam O'Prey from Swinton in Salford will be sentenced at Manchester Crown Court next month. Activists from Extinction Rebellion have gathered outside the United Utilities AGM in Warrington to protest against sewage dumping in the region's waterways. Environments Agency figures show that last year the company was responsible for over 400,000 hours of sewage being released. United Utilities say they're starting on the biggest ever cleanup programme, but protesters say it's all about money being paid out to shareholders and bosses. We're here because everyone's just had enough of the huge amounts of sewage spillage that are going into our seas, our rivers, our waterways. And we're fed up of companies like United Utilities making an enormous profit for executives at the top. I understand United Utilities CEO is one of the highest paid in the utilities industry as well. So put money into our common good, not into a few people's pockets. That's what we're after here. Well, we've got a response from United Utilities uh, who say they, are, uh, they fully respect the rights of those who wish to protest and have committed to investing one and a half billion pounds over the next two years to improve the health of our region's rivers. Entertainment professionals turned out for a demonstration in Salford this afternoon in support of their counterparts who are on strike in America. Members of the UK's equity union stood in solidarity with those who are calling for higher pay and safeguards against unauthorised use of images through artificial intelligence. If you look at, at shortcuts, then it's likely to downgrade what people see. 
and in order to protect uh, the quality of the work that people see and that people do and the conditions that people have, the lifestyle that people have, um, we, you know, we, we, we need to stick together, we need to support the American actors and become aware of ourselves and what action we may need to take. Here's what's uh, still to come on the ITV News at 6.30 with Charlene. Coming up, the national picture after by-elections that delivered one win each for Lib Dem, Labour and the Conservatives. Colossal majorities crumbled overnight in Somerset and in North Yorkshire. But the Tories narrowly cling on to Boris Johnson's old seat. We'll ask what it all means ahead of the next general election. Also ahead, we go inside the Bibby Stockholm, the migrant barge that could soon hold 500 asylum seekers and... I left my heart. The life and voice of Tony Bennett, the legendary pop and jazz singer who's died aged 96. So do join us for those stories and much more from 6.30. Ah, Tony Bennett, what a voice. Memories of childhood. Right. My parents used to play him all the time. <laughs> God love him. Silky voice. <laughs> um, well, next tonight, and we are going back in time to 1923. It was a busy old year. The USSR came into being. The Flying Scotsman locomotive started service. Wembley Stadium hosted its first FA Cup final, which was won by Bolton Wanderers. And women were legally allowed to wear trousers in America. <laughs> what a fact. But 1923 was also the first year that a party of pilgrims left Liverpool for Lourdes in the south of France to head for the Holy Shrine there and its legendary healing waters. Well, since then, tens of thousands have made the journey and early today, hundreds more set out from Liverpool Airport. Waving them off, our correspondent, Victoria Grimes. Following in the footsteps of those many before them, these pilgrims are setting off on a very special journey. And for those who couldn't walk by themselves, help was on hand from an army of volunteers, all giving up their time to make sure that everyone gets a chance to go. Vera's just one of those travelling. She has a serious lung condition and two weeks ago was so ill in hospital that she was given the last rites. Someone's to come to Lourdes, I cried and cried. <laughs> I had everyone praying, the girls on the switchboard, the nurses and everyone. Without helpers like Joan, it's a journey she couldn't even contemplate. When we're in the hospital and they come around and they make sure I'm on the machine, I have a machine of a nice, because I stopped breathing 19 times of a nice. And, shower you. and she showers me as well. 30 years I've been helping. And yeah. your kids help now as well, don't Well, my son Damien has been coming since he was 14 and he's 48 at the end of this month. <laughs> and uh, Carmel I brought when she was a little girl and she's progressed up to the hospitality. It's something very, very special yeah. that you can't explain really. Just love it. The shrine at Lourdes is said to be where St Bernadette had visions of the Virgin Mary. It's legendary healing waters making it a place of pilgrimage for the sick. This year marks 100 years since the first trip by the Liverpool Archdiocese. 86-year-old Mary's dad was on that trip. She's volunteered herself since 1954. I used to feed patients and they always used to laugh because they quite liked to get me because they said, everybody else just says, open your mouth and they throw the food in. I've got a feeling you'll still be getting involved. <laughs> I'm one of those people who interferes. And... People will find healing within themselves and that occurs in all sorts of ways, through the friendship, companionship, through the care that we give, through the prayers, through the, through the wonderful liturgy, the sunshine, you name it. It's a spiritual journey too for volunteer medics and helpers. Nurse Dan says his time there has inspired him to retrain as a priest. We see the joy of the sick people that are there and they're the priority and we see the service that people give to others so Lord will always hold a very special place in my heart. We say our lady please bring us back next year and while I'm able and mobile I'll keep on coming. How long do you reckon you'll keep coming for? Will you be here for the 200? <laughs> I don't we think so. so. <laughs> and we have got a Liverpool grave here as well you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Vera, you're not going in it yet. And for everyone here today, this is a very special calling. Victoria Grimes, ITV News, Liverpool.
Now, what chance of an all Northwest final in Rugby League's Challenge Cup? We have three teams in this weekend's semi finals. Reigning champions Wigan Warriors take on Hull KR at Headingley on Sunday. Before that, Lee are looking to make it through to their first Challenge Cup final since 1971. Standing in their way, though, are world champion St Helens. The two sides face each other at Warrington's Halliwell Jones Stadium tomorrow. It's every boy's dream, uh, especially from, from around these parts, uh, to play at Wembley in a, in a Challenge Cup final. And I've had the taste of it before and I know how special it is and I want to do it again. It's been a, a long time for the club and our fans to, to be cheery about this Challenge Cup competition. And, you know, we're 80 minutes away from Wembley. So, you know, they're, they're buzzing at the moment around town. It's, it's certainly, uh, and we've deserved to be here. The Challenge Cup means a lot to the town, a lot to our club. So we've news that our owner Ian Lennigan will be departing at the end of the year. I think it would be a fitting tribute and a fitting way if we can get to him to at least one final this year. The club has a great affinity to this competition, so I, I, would, I would love if we could do that for Ian. And a place in the first ever Women's Challenge Cup final to be held at Wembley is up for grabs for both Wigan and St Helens. Wigan face Leeds in their semi-final on Sunday, while tomorrow Saints continue the defence of the trophy they've won two years in a row when they take on York. For the women's game, it does feel like the biggest thing to happen for us. Uh, you know, me personally, I fell in love with the Challenge Cup. That's how I got involved in rugby league. To have the opportunity to potentially play at Wembley in our own Challenge Cup final, it's massive. So this game, you know, all semi-finals are big, but this one's just massive. Getting to play at Wembley is with the men and the triple header. It's, it, it's a huge deal. It's, it shows how far the game has come in the last few years, and it'd be amazing to, to be one of the sides in the final and, and have that, that opportunity. To football and England's big moment is almost upon us. Tomorrow morning, the European champions will begin their quest to be crowned world champions. The Lionesses play their first match of the World Cup. It's against Haiti in Brisbane. England are expected to go a long way in this tournament so they can't afford any early slip-ups against a team ranked 53rd in the world. Yeah, we've had a lot of hard work leading up to it. Um, we've put in yeah, a lot on the training pitch in terms of you know, polishing things off and... Yeah, I think you just want to get, not the first game out of the way, but it's an important one. I think sometimes for me it's probably the toughest one, um, just to get the, the three points in the group and try and get the first win. Um, so, yeah, I think everyone's just raring to, to go and, yeah, we're just excited for it to start now. And England v Haiti is live here on ITV1 tomorrow morning. Kickoff is 10.30. Now, with the soggy weather we're having, you might think it's not an ideal time for outdoor theatre, but the stage is set at historic Williamson Park in Lancaster as the summer season gets underway tonight. The city's Duke's Theatre Company is putting on Around the World in 80 Days and audiences will be able to stroll throughout the park as all the action takes place. Over half a million people have watched the outdoor show since 1987. Paul Crone chose the wettest day of the week <laughs> to catch up with Phileas Fogg and friends in rehearsals. Right, please pay attention as we don't have much time. Ashton Memorial Lancaster, venue for the Duke's Theatre annual outdoor production. A fast-moving tale of a man trying to get from A to B to win a bet. The name's Fogg, Phileas Fogg. Come around the world with me in 80 days, or in your case, two and a half minutes. Well, come on then. Well, you heard the man. Yes, the Lancashire landmark is the perfect setting for the epic tale of Fogg's round the world journey. There'll be five locations across Williamson Park for audiences to follow, whether it's pouring down or not. With Lancashire audiences, actually, that's less trouble than you think it might be because the audiences tend to turn up very hardy with all of their stuff and some of those wet shows are actually some of the funnest shows you can do. Does your elephant have a name? Keone! Oh, delighted to meet you, Keone! When you're walking around the park, we go from one location to another. It's promenade, so we get to sort of interact with the audience, have conversations with them, and you get to really see the impact as well that the story's having with them. Uh, you can hear some of the music going off now. <laughs> I can't wait to see how the audience responds to it because it helps, it feeds you so much as an actor when they kind of, they're getting enthused and they're traveling along with you. And I'm especially interested in seeing when we're walking up together with the audience, how that's going to feed our character, because that's not something that I, I've done before personally. So I think it'll be, it, it's going to be really interesting. Now, as you can imagine, Around the World in 80 Days is a busy, busy production. And the cast have to contend with 44 costume changes, 32 hats, 
12 pairs of shoes, four moustaches and two wigs. Come on. Since 1987, the Dukes has been entertaining generations of families with their summer promenade shows, attracting a total of more than half a million people. Audiences love the setting, actors love the challenge. The park's another character uh, in and of itself, really. So, um, yeah, we get to interact with that. And I, I, I love, like, actually when it's like this today, it's, it's even better. Around the World in 80 Days runs in Williamson Park until August the 27th. Paul Crone, ITV News. I just know it's going to be great, whatever the weather. Yes, and it's weird to go around the world in 80 days, isn't it, for it to be raining in all of those <laughs> yeah. places. But this is England. <laughs> <laughs> we have now the rain forecast from Kerry. <laughs> have you burnt tea again? I'm scraping the cold oil into the bin, not the sink. Can we eat outside? It's nice. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello, a very good evening to you. Turning decidedly more unsettled as we head through tonight and tomorrow. It does look like practice day was probably the best weather day for the Open. A big thank you to Tony Hope for this shot and also to Johnny for this shot. Johnny lives in Kendall. He moved a little bit further north to take the shot, but it is the Cumbrian Fells and our Lancashire Pennines that are likely to see potentially 40 to 50 millimetres of rainfall during the weekend. And that's on top of our four counties that have already had what we'd expect for the time of year. And on top of that, we'd expect around 60% at this time in the month. So low pressure is to the north and west of us during the course of tomorrow, and that's bringing in several weather fronts. So not wall-to-wall -wall rainfall for the whole of the day, but yes, there will be periods of rain, heavy at times, especially down the western slopes of the Pennines and the Cumbrian Fells as we head through into the second half of the night. But with the cloud cover and the outbreaks of rain and the winds starting to strengthen out into the Irish Sea, nothing too chilly. A big thank you to Marcus Milton for this great shot of family scene at Kirby Fell at sunset, 5.09 and 9.25 are your sun times for tomorrow. Won't see much sun though tomorrow. Cloudy skies, misty and murky over the hills. Periods of rain of which will be heavy at times. There might be a brief respite in between the systems before further rain pushes through as we head through into tomorrow night. And that's likely to linger, especially in those spots that I mentioned earlier. Parts of Cumbria and Lancashire could see further quite high rainfall totals on Sunday. Further south, sunshine and showers, but they could be heavy and could be thundery. And for the first full week of the summer holidays. Changeable is the weather word. Have a good one. It's a little bit burnt. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Crikey, it really could be October, couldn't it? Looking forward to schoolboys football tomorrow morning. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Bye -bye.